Most individuals need help with how to handle their paycheck and often need more knowledge about financial literacy. If you think you're one of them, then this video is for you. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about an important yet often overlooked aspect of our lives – where to place your money when you get paid to save money faster. Did you know that as per a report from the Federal Reserve, nearly 37% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency expense due to their financial situation? This speaks volumes about the urgent need for efficient money management and saving strategies. And that's why we're here to help you and share with you valuable knowledge to help you succeed in your financial journey. We will share with you fail-proof methods that will not just help you get on top of your finances, but will also guide you on how to save money fast. But before we start, hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you always stay updated with our new content. Now get ready to take notes and let's get started. Retirement Fund Let's kick things off with something we tend to push to the back of our minds – our retirement. As young professionals, we often feel that retirement is too far off in the future to be a concern now. We couldn't be more wrong. The earlier we start saving for our retirement, the more secure and comfortable our golden years will be. According to experts, it's advisable to contribute about 10-15% to of your paycheck towards your retirement fund. The sooner you start, the more you can take advantage of the compound interest that allows your savings to grow exponentially over the years. If your employer offers a 401k plan or similar, make sure to opt in, especially if they offer any form of matching contributions. There are also other options like Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs that can serve the same purpose. Remember, saving for retirement isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Even small contributions can add up over time to create a substantial nest egg. Not just that, it's important to also reassess your retirement savings regularly. Life changes such as a raise, a new job, or changes in your family situation might warrant an increase in your contributions. As you progress in your career and your income grows, aim to increase your retirement savings rate. It's all about creating a secure and worry-free retirement for yourself. So, as soon as that paycheck hits your account, make it a priority to set aside a portion for your future self. You may not see immediate results, but trust me, your future self will thank you for the financial stability and independence that your early planning has enabled. Let me know in the comments below if you're already contributing to your retirement fund. If you are, that's fantastic. If you're not, that's okay too. It's never too late to start. We actually have videos to help you invest for early retirement. Just check the description box below. Checking account Next, our second place to allocate your hard-earned money, let's focus on the financial world, your checking account. Now, this might seem pretty basic, after all, your paycheck probably gets deposited directly into your checking account. However, it's not as straightforward as it may seem. The way you manage your checking account can significantly impact your financial stability and saving capacity. A checking account serves as your central point where your income and expenses meet. It's where your salary lands, where your bills are paid from, and from where you transfer funds to your savings or investment accounts. Because of the pivotal role it plays, it's essential to manage your checking account effectively. One way to make your checking account work for you is by setting up automatic withdrawals to your other accounts. For example, you can automate transfers to your retirement fund, emergency savings, or investment accounts. This is a simple yet powerful strategy to ensure you're consistently saving and investing without having to remember to do it manually each time. Now, here's an advanced tip that can be a game changer. Consider having multiple checking accounts for different purposes. This strategy, known as the envelope budgeting system, allows you to separate your funds based on your expenses. For instance, you could have one checking account for fixed costs like rent and utilities, another for variable costs like groceries and entertainment, and another for your long-term financial goals. This makes it easier to see where your money is going, manage your cash flow, and ensure that you're staying within your budget. Remember, your checking account isn't just a stopping point for your paycheck on its way to being spent. When used strategically, it can be a powerful tool in your quest to save money and improve your financial situation. Necessities Moving on to the third place your money should go when you get paid, necessities. These are the core expenses that keep your life running. We're talking about food, shelter, utilities, transportation, and healthcare. These are not optional, and they form a significant chunk of your monthly budget. It is suggested that around 50% of your income should go towards necessities. This might sound like a lot, but when you break it down, it becomes clear why this is the case. Shelter costs include your rent or mortgage, homeowner's insurance, and property taxes. 
Utilities encompass electricity, water, gas, and internet services. Food covers groceries and dining out, and transportation includes car payments, insurance, fuel, maintenance, and public transportation costs. Healthcare provides health insurance premiums, out-of-pocket medical costs, and any necessary medications. The most crucial part of managing your necessities is understanding the difference between needs and wants. Needs are things you must have to survive and function in society, like nutritious food and a safe place to live. Wants, on the other hand, are things that enhance or improve our life but aren't strictly necessary, like dining out at a fancy restaurant or a new pair of designer shoes. It's essential to prioritize your needs over your wants when budgeting. There are also several ways to save money within your necessities category. For example, when it comes to food, meal planning, cooking at home, and shopping sales can dramatically cut your grocery bill. For utilities, simple changes like using energy-efficient appliances, being mindful of your energy usage, and adjusting your thermostat by a few degrees can lead to significant savings. With healthcare, preventive care, generic medications, and a health savings account can lower costs. When it comes to shelter, considering roommates or downsizing can significantly reduce your monthly expenses. Also, keep in mind that percentages are guidelines, not strict rules. Your actual expenses may vary based on your income level, geographic location, and personal circumstances. The important thing is to have a realistic understanding of what your necessities cost and ensure you're able to cover these costs comfortably every month. Debt Payments And now, let's discuss the fourth place your money needs to go when you get paid. Debt Payments This is an area that a lot of people struggle with. From student loans to credit cards, from personal loans to mortgages, debt can be a significant burden. But managing it well is an essential step towards financial freedom. Around 10-20% to of your paycheck should ideally be dedicated to debt payoff. Now you might be thinking, I have so much debt, 10% won't make a dent. This could be true, especially if you have high interest debt like credit cards. But remember, consistency and patience are key when it comes to reducing debt. Every dollar paid towards debt is a dollar closer to financial independence. Start with maintaining at least the minimum payments on all your debts to avoid fees and damage to your credit score. However, if possible, aim to pay more than the minimum, especially on high interest debt. Paying only the minimum can lead to prolonged debt and massive interest costs over time. If you find yourself having various debts, consider strategies like the debt snowball or debt avalanche methods. The debt snowball method involves paying off debts in order from smallest to largest, regardless of interest rate. It provides quick wins that can motivate you to keep going. On the other hand, the debt avalanche method prioritizes debts with the highest interest rate first, which can save you more money over time. Both methods have their merits, and it's crucial to choose a strategy that you can stick with. We have a couple of videos explaining all the aspects of debt and how to manage the bad debt. I will provide the link in the description. Remember, debt repayment is not just about the money, it's also about reducing stress and gaining the freedom to make choices in your life. Once your debt is under control, you'll have more funds to allocate towards savings, investments, and other financial goals. If you're enjoying this video, please take a moment to like the video. It means a lot and helps to support our channel. Emergency Fund The fifth place for your paycheck is your emergency fund. This is a crucial step in managing your finances effectively. We've already mentioned that 40% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency expense. It's a shocking statistic, and it highlights the need for everyone to have a safety net. So, what is an emergency fund? It's a stash of money set aside to cover financial surprises life throws your way. These surprises can include unexpected medical bills, car repairs, home repairs, or even job loss. An emergency fund can be a financial lifesaver when you encounter these kinds of unexpected expenses. Now, how much should you save in your emergency fund? A good rule of thumb is to aim for three to six months worth of living expenses. However, starting small is perfectly okay. In fact, allocating around 5 to 10% of your income towards an emergency fund is an excellent starting point. Building an emergency fund can be a slow process, but it's essential not to be discouraged. Over time, those small, consistent contributions can add up to a significant sum that can provide you with a strong safety net. Here's a pro tip. Keep your emergency fund in a separate high-yield savings account. It will allow you to earn some interest on your money and discourage you from spending it impulsively. However, it should also be easily accessible in case of an emergency. Building an emergency fund can also have psychological benefits. It can provide a sense of security knowing that you have funds available if a crisis occurs. 
You may even find that having an emergency fund reduces your overall level of stress. I want to remind you all that building an emergency fund is not a luxury but a necessity. Start small, but start today. Once you have a fully funded emergency fund, you'll have the peace of mind that comes from knowing you're prepared for unexpected expenses. Investing Sixth on our list is investing. What are the most effective ways to increase your wealth over time? There's a saying that goes, don't work for money, make money work for you. This is the principle of investing. When you invest, you are making your money generate more money by earning interest or by growing in value. The reality is that keeping your money in a traditional savings account is not the best way to grow your wealth. With today's low interest rates, you're not likely to see substantial growth over time. This is where investing comes in. When you invest your money in appreciating assets such as stocks, bonds, real estate, or even your own business, your potential for long-term financial growth increases significantly. Now you might be thinking, but investing is risky. Yes, all investments come with some degree of risk. However, it's important to understand that risk and return are typically linked. Higher potential returns often come with a higher level of risk. That's why it's crucial to assess your own risk tolerance when deciding where and how to invest your money. There are numerous ways to start investing. For example, you might choose to invest in the stock market, which involves buying shares in a company and profiting from its success. Or you could invest in bonds, essentially lending your money to a company or government in return for periodic interest payments and return of the loan amount at the end of a specified period. Alternatively, real estate is another popular investment choice. This could involve buying property to rent out and earning a regular income from tenants while potentially benefiting from property value increases over time. The percentage you choose to invest will depend on factors like your income, expenses, financial goals, and risk tolerance. If you're new to investing, it might seem intimidating. We actually have a video that can make investing more accessible to beginners. Check it out later. Investing can seem like a big step, but it's one of the most important ones on the path towards financial security and independence. It's all about letting your money work for you and creating additional income streams. Fun Fund Finally, and perhaps most intriguingly, we arrive at the last destination your money needs to head to when you get paid. The Fun Fund Yes, you heard it right, we're talking about a fund specifically set aside for enjoyment and entertainment. Life is not just about working, saving, and investing. It's also about enjoying the fruits of your labor. The Fun Fund is all about balance and mental health. It's a way of reminding ourselves that while financial responsibility is important, so is enjoying life. It's about allowing ourselves some enjoyment without feeling guilty, and it's an important component in our journey towards financial independence and well-being. We recommend allocating about 5-10% to of your income towards your fun fund. This is your money to spend on anything that brings you joy, whether it's dining at your favorite restaurant, going to concerts, traveling, or even indulging in that fancy latte every once in a while. The point is to create a fund that allows you to enjoy the things you love guilt-free because you've planned for it. However, it's important to remember that the fun fund is not an excuse to be reckless with your money. It's not about spending beyond your means or using it as an excuse to ignore your financial responsibilities. It's about planning and allocating a specific portion of your income to spend on the things that bring you joy. Remember, personal finance is not one size fits all. What works for one person may not work for another. It's about finding a balance that works for you. It's about making informed decisions that align with your financial goals and lifestyle. Moreover, creating a fun fund also promotes healthier spending habits. It encourages you to think about spending and plan for it in advance. It helps you avoid impulsive spending since you know that you have money set aside specifically for fun activities. Now it's your turn. Do you have a fun fund? Let us know in the comments how you enjoy your fun fund and if it's been helpful in managing your finances. And if you don't have one yet, what's stopping you? Remember, personal finance is just that, personal. So find what works best for you and stick with it. And there you have it, the seven places your money should go the moment you get paid. By prioritizing these areas, you're not only saving money fast, but also working towards financial independence. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.